A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 16th of August 2022. So displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. Now without much delay let's get into the first news article discussion. Now for our first news article discussion let us take up this data point. This particular data point talks about key health indicators in India like life expectancy, IMR, underweight children and vaccination coverage. So the idea of this data point is to compare the performance of different states of India in these key indicators. Okay? So in this context let us discuss all important points mentioned in the data point. Before that, the syllabus relevant to this news article is highlighted here for your reference. Please go through it. Before getting into the discussion, just look at this main question. It was asked in the year 2018 in GS paper 2. So let me read out the question for you. Appropriate local community level health care intervention is a prerequisite to achieve health for all in India. Explain. So, I have to write an answer in 150 words for 10 marks. See, the reason why I have chosen this question is because you can relate the data from the data point to this question and answer the question. So, that is why I have picked this question as well. We will discuss the question after discussing the data in the data point. Okay. So, let us take this first graph. This graph talks about life expectancy at birth. Life expectancy at birth indicates how long on average a newborn can expect to live. The data shows that Kerala is the state with highest life expectancy of 72.9 in early 1990 and it was 75.2 in 2013 to 2017. And here you can see that Madhya Pradesh had the lowest life expectancy of 54.7 in 1990s and UP had the lowest life expectancy of 65 in 2013 to 2017 period. So here you can understand that there is an inequality among the states in terms of life expectancy. Now look at the second graph. This is with respect to IMR in India. So here what is IMR? IMR is nothing but infant mortality rate. Infant mortality is the death of an infant before his or her first birthday. The infant mortality rate is the number of infant deaths for every thousand live births. So here you can see that in 2004, Kerala had lowest IMR of 12 and in 2018, Nahaland had lowest IMR of 4. In 2004, Madhya Pradesh had highest IMR of 79 and again in 2018, Madhya Pradesh had highest IMR of 48. Now coming to the third graph, this is with respect to vaccination coverage in India. See, in 1992, only 35.4% of children was vaccinated, but in 2019 to 21, 75% of children were vaccinated. In 1993, Goa had the highest vaccination coverage of 75%, and in 2019 to 21, Odisha had the highest vaccination coverage of 90.5%. And both in 1993 and 2019 to 21, Nahaland had the lowest vaccination coverage of 3.8 percentage and 5.9 percentage respectively. See here we are discussing the data just to give you an idea and you really don't have to remember each and every number. Just to understand or remember the difference we are discussing the number. Okay. Now look at this last graph. This is with respect to underweight children. See children with low weight for age are known as underweight. Okay. A child who is underweight may be stunted, wasted or both. So overall 53.4 percentage of children were underweight in 1992 to 93 period and it declined to 30 percentage in 2019 to 21. Bihar had the highest share of underweight children both in 1992 and 2019-21. It had 62.6% of underweight children in 1992-93 to 
and it had 41 percentage of underweight children in 2019 to 21. Similarly, Mizoram had the lowest share of underweight children both in 1992 and 2019 to 21. It had 28.1 percentage of underweight children in 1992 to 93 and had 12.7 percentage of underweight children in 2019 to 21. So, this is about the data point given here. So, now let's see how we can use this data in the mains question that we saw just now. See, in all these data, we can understand that there is a widespread disparities among the states. Disparities in the sense there are wide variation between the states on health parameters like IMR, expectancy of life at birth, vaccination coverage and underweight children. We know there are disparity in gross state domestic product that is GSDP and incomes as well. Also, there is disparities in education parameters like adult literacy and gross enrollment ratio. So, you can use the data that we discussed today in the introduction part to justify that there is regional disparity which is hindering India to achieve the vision of health for all. So, after giving an introduction, you can give suggestions to how to address this regional disparities. So, now let us see them one by one. Firstly, the community level health care centers have to be strengthened. See, as you know, community level health care or the first point of contact for treatment of any disease, it meets the immediate needs of the individuals. So, it should be established in all parts of the country, including the northeast states. And the existing gap in health infrastructure between rural and urban area has to be reduced. The states which have performed poorly on the health indicators like IMR, life expectancy rate, etc. have to be given the higher priority. Okay. Secondly, India has to improve its nurses to population ratio. See, India currently has nearly 2 nurses per 1000 population which is less than the World Health Organization norms. So, as per the norms, there should be 3 nurses per 1000 population. So, here we can be proud of a fact that India's doctor population ratio at 1 is to 854, which is better than the World Health Organization's standard of 1 is to 1000. Here doctors include both allopathic doctors and Ayush doctors. But the issue is that most of the doctors are concentrated in urban areas. This creates inequality in health parameters among rural and urban areas. So, there should be an increase in the doctor to population ratio in rural areas to achieve health for all. Thirdly, India have to increase the expenditure on health care to 5 to 10 percentage of the GDP. See, currently it is stagnating at less than 2 percentage. Fourthly, affordable health care facilities or the need of the heart. See, specialized geriatric facilities in hospitals remain out of reach for most of the population, especially in rural and backward areas. So, healthcare should be made affordable for all. Then, more focus should be given on women's health, which is very important. It is well known that improvement in the health of the mother will improve IMR rate and will reduce the number of underweight children. So, addressing this is also very important. Now, finally, a decentralized policy involving all the stakeholders from every segment of the society is the need of the heart. So, all these measures will help India to achieve universal health coverage and will help India to realize the vision of health for all. So, these are some of the suggestions that you might give. And just to substantiate your suggestions, you can use the data from the data point. Again, I am telling you, there is no perfect template for any main answer writing. If you can justify your answer with a report or a study, that's enough for a main answer writing. Okay. Hope this discussion gave you an idea how to approach a question and how to use the data from the newspaper. So, that's all about this news article discussion. With this learn to points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. See this article here. It says that India has handed over a Dornier aircraft to Sri Lanka and as per the article this action reaffirms the security ties of India with the island nation. See the story behind it is 
Sri Lanka in 2018 had requested India for two Dornier 228 aircraft to enhance its maritime surveillance capabilities. And India is still manufacturing these two Dornier 228 aircrafts. So before delivering the newly manufactured Dornier aircraft, India has surprisingly gifted Sri Lanka with Dornier 228 maritime patrol aircraft from the Indian naval fleet. for training purposes so this handing over event happened a day before the arrival of a chinese space and satellite tracking vessel in sri lanka so this is the crux of the news article given here so in this context let us understand about the dornier aircraft from preliminary perspective see the dornier aircraft that was handed over was designed and developed jointly by indian aircraft manufacturer hindustan aeronautics limited that is hal and RUAG Aerospace Germany know that it is indigenously manufactured under the made in india initiative the handed over aircraft was dornier 228 maritime patrol aircraft as i already said the reports indicate that india may provide one dornier 228 maritime patrol aircraft from the indian naval fleet on a gratis basis for 2 years so here gratis means without charge or recompense and this is until the plane is ready which is manufactured in india for sri lanka so just for training purposes india is now deploying one dornier 228 maritime patrol aircraft from indian naval fleet on a gratis basis for 2 years so the sri lankan country can use this particular aircraft free of cost until they procure the newly manufactured aircraft from india okay now we shall see the features of the aircraft See, it is a short takeoff and a landing aircraft. So, what does that mean? See, it is a term used to describe aircraft with very short runway requirements. It is also capable of operating out of semi-prepared runways, and it is a twin-engine, multi-role light transport aircraft. It is used by Indian Coast Guard, Indian Air Force, and Indian Navy. it is used by the armed forces for electronic warfare missions maritime surveillance and disaster relief system some other purposes include pollution prevention troop transport aerial survey search and rescue commuter transport and many other like even cargo and logistics support also know that it is a non pressurized plane that is capable of day and night services it can operate in all weather conditions including high temperature or high humidity the air conditioning system in devo 228 is capable of maintaining the flight compartment temperatures at comfortable levels now let us see some equipments that increases the significance of dornier 228 see it is equipped with the solid state flight data recorder that is ssfdr and cockpit voice recorder CVR that can record 25 hours of aircraft data and 2 hours of audio respectively the emergency locator transmitter that is ELT 503 enables faster detection of aircraft in distress as compared to other conventional systems traffic collision and avoidance system identify and display intruding and threatening collision aircraft and issue resolution advisories The fuel dumping system of the aircraft allows for discharging additional fuel as well. So this helps the plane to maintain admissible landing weight in the event of an emergency. So now you know why it has multi-purpose role. So that's all about this news article. Very very important news article. In this news article, we discussed in detail about Dornier aircraft 228. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. See this article here it is based on a study by the Indian Institute of Tropical Metrology that is IITM so in this article discussion we are going to see the important points mentioned in the article see as per the article the increasing climate change is likely to impact the renewable energy ambitions of various states in the country the researchers have created climate simulations for the past 55 years and future projections for 55 years from six models then these projections were analyzed 
and the model indicates that the wind potential over the onshore regions shows an increasing trend while the offshore regions show a decreasing trend for the non monsoon months so here you have to know what is onshore wind and offshore winds to say it in simple words onshore winds or winds blowing from water to land and the onshore wind energy is the power that is generated by wind turbine located on land now the offshore winds or winds blowing from land to water and the offshore wind forms generate electricity from wind blowing across the sea see these offshore winds are considered more efficient than onshore wind forms that is the winds blowing from land to water is considered more efficient than the wind which is blowing from water to land if you are asking me why this is because of the high speed of winds greater consistency and lack of physical interference such as land or human made objects so from this we can understand that there is loss for us because studies suggest that the offshore wind potential is decreasing so this is the first inference and it is also said that the coastal regions of odisha andhra pradesh and tamil nadu show promising potential for wind energy the seasonal analysis indicates that the southern and northwestern region of the country will have a higher wind speed during the winter and monsoon months see already during these months wind potential will be maximum now climate change has also added to this wind potential so this is the second inference now thirdly the study also reveals that seasonal and annual wind speed is likely to decrease over north india and increase along south india so what does that mean this means that wind energy production in states like tamil nadu andhra pradesh and odisha is likely to benefit because of climate change conditions on the other hand solar radiation is estimated to decrease over the next 50 years during all seasons the future solar projections indicate that the solar radiation is going to decrease during all seasons and this is applicable to most of the active solar farming regions in the country the projections indicate that there might be a reduction of solar radiation by 10% to 15% in the next 50 years so here a question arises what should we do see we should consider central and south central india for any more future solar investments the other thing that we can do is research and development we can work on increasing the efficiency of solar cells know that today's typical silicon solar cell panels create at around 22% efficiency and this should be increased so that it can be compensated for the loss of solar radiation so these are the predictions made by the study which was conducted by the indian institute of tropical meteorology that is iitm so in this discussion we saw that there is a plus and there is a minus the plus is south indian states especially tamil nadu andhra pradesh and odisha is likely to benefit due to climate change the region which already experienced maximum wind potential will experience an added wind potential so this is the plus and on the minus side we saw that the offshore regions show a decreasing trend for the non monsoon months this is a loss for us because due to advantages like high speed of wind greater consistency and the lack of physical interference like land or human made objects offshore winds are considered more efficient than onshore wind forms as the offshore wind potential is decreasing this is considered as a minus and finally we saw about the solar radiation the solar radiation is estimated to be decreasing over the next 50 years and this will be during all seasons so we must consider central and south central india for any more future solar investments and we can invest in research and development to increase the efficiency of solar cells and that will be compensating the loss of the solar radiation so these are some of the important points that you have to make note of so you can quote these points in your mains answer writing because climate change is one of the frequently asked questions in mains so that is why you have to make note of this article so with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at this image here this image shows the humayun's tomb which was illuminated in the colors of the national flag on independence day 
So because of this, the tomb became the center of attraction in the region and many people were taking photos in front of the tomb. So using this as an opportunity, let us revise about the historic facts of Humayun's tomb. Note that Humayun's tomb is located in the eastern part of Delhi and it is one of the best preserved Mughal monuments. After a century from its construction, Humayun's tomb inspired the construction of the Taj Mahal which is more famous than this. See, it was built in 1560s and Humayun's wife, Hamida Banu Behum, she commissioned the construction of a mausoleum for her deceased husband in 1565 which is nine years after his death. And it was built under the patronage of Humayun's son, the great emperor Akbar. Now coming to its architectural details, see the architecture of the tomb is strongly influenced by Persian architecture. The architect of the building was Mirak Mirza Giyas. The tomb was constructed with a Persian style Charba garden in the center. I hope you know what is the meaning for char. Char means four obviously. So the garden was divided into four main parts by walkways or water. This was created to resemble the paradise garden described in the Quran and later this charba garden became the main feature of Mughal architecture in India. The mausoleum stands on massive platform which has a height of up to seven meters. The building was constructed using red sandstone while the tomb was made of yellow and black marble. The mausoleum is two-storied and it is crowned with white Persian style marble dome. You can see that in the image given here. The lower tire of this rectangular construction is decorated with grateful arches which are located around the whole perimeter of the building. You can see that also in the image. See, the cenotaph, that is the empty grave of the ruler, is located in the center of the upper tire. The central tomb is octagonal with corner chambers and these corner chambers houses the graves of other members of the royal family. The real grave of the emperor is on the basement floor. Note that during the period 17th to 19th century, the garden was gradually filled with the tomb of Humayun's descendants. Several Mughal emperors were also buried inside Humayun's mausoleum and because of this it was called as the necropolis of the Mughal dynasty. Moreover, this beautiful piece of architecture also has the pride of the first garden tomb on the Indian subcontinent. So that's all you have to know about this news article. So in this discussion we saw in detail about Humayun's tomb. We saw about some of the important features of the tomb. So with these learned points, we came to the end of the news article discussion. Now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion that is the preliminary practice questions. Now look at this first question. This question is about Dornier aircraft. Consider the following statements regarding Dornier aircraft. Statement 1. Dornier aircrafts are used only by Indian Coast Guard, Indian Air Force and Indian Navy. Statement 2. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited delivered the first civil DO-228 aircraft to Alliance Air under Udan scheme. Which of the above statements is or all correct? Option A 1 only, Option B 2 only, Option C both 1 and 2 and Option D neither 1 nor 2. See the correct answer for the question is Option B 2 only. Statement 1 is incorrect because it is used for commercial purposes also. That is why this statement is incorrect. Statement 2 is actually correct because such a yield delivered first civil DO-228 aircraft under Udan scheme for deployment in the state of Arunachal Pradesh by Alliance Air April 12th of 2022. It took off on its first commercial flight between Assam's Dibruga and Pasigat in Arunachal Pradesh. So this statement is incorrect and the correct answer for the question is option B to only. Now moving on to the second question. This question is about renewable energy. Consider the following statements regarding renewable energy. Statement 1. Renewable energy is the energy that is delivered from neutral sources that are not replenished at a higher rate than they are consumed. Statement 2. The main advantage of the renewable energy is that their flow is not limited. Which of the above statements is or all correct? Option A 1 only, Option B 2 only, Option C both 1 and 2 and Option D neither 1 nor 2. 
So, the correct answer for the question is option D, neither 1 nor 2. Statement 1 is incorrect because they are replenished at a higher rate than they are consumed. Replenish means to fill or stock up again, right? For example, if we utilize solar energy, it will not become exhausted over the time. This is because there is plenty of solar energy available and it will not affect the quality of sunlight that we will get tomorrow. So, this means that solar energy is getting replenished at a higher rate than they are consumed. At the same time, if we utilize fossil fuels, it will affect the quality of fossils available 10 years later. This is because fossils take more time to replenish, around thousands of years. And that is why first statement is incorrect. Second statement is also incorrect because renewable resources are virtually inexhaustible in duration but limited in the amount of energy that is available per unit of time. Let us take the example of solar energy itself. See, solar energy cannot be exhausted but it will not be available for utilizing during nights, cloudy days, rainy days, etc. Right? So, to some extent, their flow is limited. That is why this statement is also incorrect. So, the correct answer for the question is option D, neither 1 nor 2. Now, this question about Humayun tomb is the quiz question for you today. You can comment the correct answer in the comment section or you can attend the quiz question in the poll section as well. In tomorrow's video, we will be displaying the correct answer for the question. Now, moving on, the questions given here are the main question for you today. Just go through the questions. One we already discussed in today's discussion. Try to answer the another question. You can post the answer in the comment section. So, with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar Rai's Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.